So uh, a lot of you aren't black box members. Um, I'm not going to sales pitch you right now at all, really, actually. But at the end of this, we can get you a discount link. And we'll go over that at the end of this webinar. Um, first and foremost, let's show you this is black box stocks, right? A lot of buttons, a lot of features, pretty advanced platform. Uh, we're going to go over some of the things that are simple about it, some of the things that, that you can use to really drill down uh, into this as well. And uh, first off, I'm going to go ahead and send this to Seven Star Mike, and he's going to go ahead and show you guys some flow. Mike, did I have to send this to you? I don't remember. Uh, Mario, I might need your help to send this to Mike. Yeah, it won't let me grab the screen yet. I got you. No, you should get a pop up that says um, show my screen. There you go. All right. So, what I'm going to show you guys first and foremost is just the consistency of when you find the right trades. Now, the thing about flow trading, there's a lot of people that do it, a lot of people that love it, some that don't, some that are successful, some that aren't. The difference is the quality of the flow. There's a very clear indication of the type of flow that we're looking for. We have criteria that we're looking for, and there is such a thing as good flow and bad flow. So when people send me messages and they say, hey, I'm using flow, but I'm struggling, can you help me out? The first thing I do is ask, well, let me see the type of flow that you're following. And a lot of times I'll look at it and in an instant just know that, okay, that's not a trade we normally would have taken. It's low probability. So what I want to start with is over here on Stock Twits. I usually post some of the flow that I like throughout the day. And what I like about this is it shows you the results from when you post it to where the ticker is currently. So what I want to show you guys is just the consistency of picking the right trades. So here's DEC. This was from a few days ago. You can see since I posted this trade, DEC is up $48 for the underlying. And I'm actually going to show an example of that specific flow. Here's PDD. It's only up a penny. Not going to get rich off that. ATVI is up $249 since we posted that flow. This was Roku. Roku is up $18 since we posted that flow. This no, one's no. Mike, actually, actually, Roku went up several dollars after you posted that flow because that was several days ago. That's just what it's up right now. But yesterday, yeah, that thing was up like this point but that one it yeah. was up like 40 bucks it's up like 40 yeah. bucks that, <laughs> that one did amazing twitter is up 181 so, so what i want to show you guys with this one there's one down 138 so i don't hide losses if i post something that i think is good flow i'm not going to go and delete something that's a loss microsoft is up 343 since we posted that flow so what i want to show you guys with this c's is up 2.29 is just that when you find the right flow WW is up 77 cents. You're not going to get rich off that, but these don't expire for a little bit. So what I want to show you with this, WDC up 113 is just the consistency. There's another one in here somewhere, squares up 42 cents. There's another one posted somewhat recently that's a loss. There's JD down 48 cents, but that one expires in September, so we're not worried about it. So EW up 41 cents. So just going through that, what I want to see or show you guys is that there's a consistency with picking the right trades. Now, you might hear the statistic. I throw this out a lot. We've actually tracked it in a few different spreadsheets. I have a personal spreadsheet of trades. I have a spreadsheet of trades I've posted publicly for people to follow. Charlie and Maria have a spreadsheet of trades they've posted publicly. Regardless of which one you're looking at, if we're following the right type of flow, over 80% of the trades that we take are generating a profit. And that's a big number. That's, that's a lot bigger than what most people are doing. The reason we're so successful with this is because we're very specific about what trades we're going to follow. So again, going back to people that have maybe tried flow but weren't successful with it, the difference is the quality of the flow. And what you'll see with black box is that the algorithms and the amount of data that black box has access to is just better than anything else out there. So we've got all the information that we need to make choices from. And then it's just a matter of learning the good flow from the bad flow. But we do have a free class every week that goes over that. So you never have to figure this out on your own. And here's one of the examples from 622. This was DEC, D-E-C-K. They were buying the 1217, 350 calls. You can see this is a single line of flow, but it was an above the ask yellow sweep. 
So what the yellow is telling me is that in a single trade, the quality or quantity of this trade exceeded the open interest by itself. So one trade just exceeded the open interest. Above the ask is showing me some aggression. Sweep is showing me some aggression. And this was a $1.19 million trade. This is an opening transaction. So we know someone opened the 12, 17, 350 calls, and we know they paid 31.6 for these contracts. What I wanna show you guys today, this was 622. This is the DEC 12, 17, 350s. I'm gonna to go to Yahoo Finance. You guys can all look this up on your own. I'm not BSing the numbers here. You can look it up on your own time. This is the DEC 350 contracts. They were going for 62.99. So this big money trader here bought them for 31, and as of the close today, the last price was 62.99. So that is a huge gain. And something like this is gonna capture our attention. This is an aggressive entry. It's got plenty of time on it. There's big money going into it. So to sum up what we're looking for in options flow, size, time, and urgency. We want to see a lot of size on the contracts. We want to see a lot of time on the contracts. That allows for a red day where it's not going to hurt us because there's plenty of time to recover. And urgency. We want to see someone that just doesn't care what they pay for a contract. They just want to get their money out there, get it out as quick as possible. And when we see the right combination of size, time, and urgency, we're going to follow those trades because they're high probability. So when I say a lot of these trades are working out for us, the reason is it's a high probability trade. It has the right look that we're looking for, that we're gonna follow into. And because of the look of the, basically again, that aggression from the smart money, right? We want aggressive entries from these guys. And as long as it has the right look, we follow into it, there's a really good chance that these trades work out. Now, not all of them do. If anyone tells you they have a system where 100% of the trades are going to make you money, run, don't spend a second with them, they're BSing you. So not every trade is going to work out. We know that when we get into any trade. So trade management is important. We don't just buy this debt contract and sit in it until 1217. We do manage these and kind of watch them periodically. But that one already doubled and it didn't take anywhere near till 1217. That line of flow had the right look that we're looking for. And I'm gonna give you guys a sneak peek of something we did today. This is EW. EW, these are the 820 110s. This was the line of flow that caught my attention here. Again, it's a yellow above the ask sweep. So that's a pretty aggressive entry. It was for $1.69 million. And they paid 2.196 to get into these. I forget what, I think I paid 225. So 219 from the big money, I paid 225. You can see it doesn't take a lot of time to get into the trade once we recognize that there's a line of flow that we want to follow. And sometimes it's not just one line. There might be three, four, five, six lines. It might just come pouring through the screen. So there's different looks that we're looking for. But EW, the 820, 110s, that's a trade we just entered today. I don't think it's really up or down from where we got in, but they expire 820, $1.69 million above the ask sweep. That's an aggressive entry from the big money. So that's one of the trades that I took today based on flow. It's not a trade recommendation, but you guys can pull up EW. Look at the chart, see if you agree with what this big money trader did. And if that's a trade that maybe fits your trade criteria or your personal trade style, maybe that's something you can look into. But I like the look of the flow. I followed that one and we're gonna see how it does over the next few weeks. Mario, we're gonna go ahead and show them also. We're gonna to go to Mario and I wanna show you all some of the advanced news features on here. With, with Black Box, you do get the flying news. And not only flying news, you get Edgar. Um, so she's going to show you how to use keywords and some of the research we can do on black bonds. All right. So kind of just get, getting you guys also familiar with the layout. This uh, this is what you look what you're looking at when you first log into the website. You are on the stock side of the platform. You've got volatility indicator here in the center, alert log to the right of center. On the option side of the platform, that center area would be replaced with flow. Um, over here on the right is I have it already set to the news tab. However, when you first log in, you, won't, you it does take you to main chat. Underneath this area are all of your little buttons. 
If you ever get lost and don't know which button is what, all you have to do is hover over the button and the little label will pop up. So the one that we are on right now is the third from the bottom right, which is the news button. And when you click on that, what you're getting is a live feed. It streams all day long. And it's basically every piece of market information you could possibly want. Um, you can scroll through here unfiltered and just kind of read through everything if you'd like, but you can also filter this and make it a little bit easier on the eyes if, if you're looking for specific information. In the top right corner is the filters button. And if you click on filters, um, a box will pop up and you'll see there's several options. You can type in keywords. You can filter by options and use. You can filter by ratings. Like Charlie mentioned, you can um, look for Edgar filings if you'd like. Um, one of the things that I really like using this for is ratings to look for analyst action. So if you select ratings, unselect market news, unselect seeking alpha and hit apply. When you do that, what you're getting are all analyst actions. So these are upgrades, downgrades, price target changes, initiations, resumptions, general commentary. It's all under ratings. Uh, and I really like looking at this, especially first thing in the morning, um, just to kind of see what's going on. And it kind of gives me an idea of um, tickers I may want to watch. And you'll see here, it says uh, Raymond James has initiated Camping World with an, outperform, with an outperform rating. If you click on the headline, the little article will pop up and you'll get the commentary with it. So there's really no commentary there, just an, initi an, initi an initiation with an outperform rating and $45 price target. It's nice to have that commentary because then you can kind of get an idea as to how much weight to give that action. So oftentimes, um, NVIDIA is a good example. This morning, we had BMO raise the price target to 1,000 from 750. And it says that um, the analyst cited, is citing confidence in the data center business as it continues to evolve from a hardware business to hardware with meaningful software component further out. Analyst now sees the business growing to 32 billion uh, in a few years versus prior expectations of 25 billion. So that's actually pretty substantial. So you'll get that kind of commentary if you actually click on the headline and look at the news. You can um, click on filters again, and another way you can filter this news is by clicking options news. When you do that, what you're getting is, it's basically the flies version of unusual options activity. So you'll see here um, TPR, which we actually did take, some of us took, TPR call volume above normal and directionally bullish. And when you click on that, you'll see that they are saying that uh, next week's 42 halves, which we followed in the August 37 and a half puts are most active. These, and they're saying that the calls are trading four times expected. Now, this is just an extra layer of information. We were actually already in this play when this came out. And that happens often. So the system, we have, we've actually already seen it come through the system. If it's good enough, the system's alerted it. And if we like that flow, we're in it as we were with this one. So again, just an extra layer of information. You can also search for Edgar filing. So if you select Edgar and hit apply, you'll get all filings that way. And if you like, if there's certain filings that you want to look for, you can do, you can scan through just by looking this way, or you can actually type in different filings for uh, all you guys that like SPACs, um, your S1, hit apply. When you do that, now you're getting live S1 filings as they come through, which is kind of cool. You can also just type in SPAC. And now you'll get everything SPAC related, anything that has SPAC with a uh, in the article or in the headline, you'll get live as it comes through, which is actually really cool as well. So any any filings that you that you want, you can do. Um, often what I like to do during the day is I select options news and ratings and I hit apply and that's what I keep an eye on throughout the day. So this news, this news area is extremely powerful. There's a lot of information there. There's many ways to filter it. You can customize it however you want. You can search for specific tickers if you want. Um, so if I want all NVIDIA news for today, I can type in NVIDIA. And just to show you the filters again, I'm gonna unselect options using ratings just to get everything. And now you'll get everything NVIDIA related. And it will go back um, a certain amount of time as well. So you can continue, you can scroll back to April 6th and look at all NVIDIA news. And to get back to all news, you just select all news. And that's how I use the news. And I'm going to pass this on over to Mel to go through some dark pool. Thank you, Maria. Let me just set my screen up real quick. All 
Okay, I am Mel Stone. I am the Dark Bowl moderator for the team and really excited to share this information. Um, Black Box provides the retail trader with the unique advantage of being able to get as close as we possibly can to the smart money aka the whales, the insiders in real time. We're able to see activity in both the options flow and dark pool transactions, providing us with more data so we can make better and more trading decisions. Um, so let's take a step back. So what is a dark pool? Dark pools are a private exchange used by larger market participants to facilitate sizable share transactions. So they're coming in with size. They transact in a dark pool, so their larger orders are not seen until they've completed that transaction. We do not know the intent of the trade, whether that was a buy or a sell, but we can now start to monitor these stocks knowing the larger market participants are active in these names. With BBS, we have the advantage to see these larger transactions with our dark pool scanner. Um, additionally, we have the proprietary dark pool volume profile, which will overlay the volume at price directly on your chart. So you can see how further price action reacts at these levels. So I'm gonna just jump right in. I'm gonna be piggybacking off of EW because we had this come through today. Mike mentioned the options flow. Um, and I also remembered we had some dark pool activity. So we've seen the options flow. What I'm gonna do is pop this chart out so we can get a better visual. There was no dark pool activity that came through today, but I'm going to go ahead and show a five minute chart because they did come in just a few days ago with some size. Change this to a five minute here. <clears throat> and here you can see in orange, this is our volume profile. This is showing you that we've had dark pool activity at this price, which is a actually pretty interesting because we've come down and we've retested. We also came down and tried to retest today. Let me just use my scroll wheel, make this a little bit bigger. Um, but price is holding above and this is a larger level. So while we can see the visual, let's go ahead. It's not something that came through the feed today. We do have the feature to be able to show you the actual transaction details. So I'm just going to go to history so we can actually kind of get a gauge and feel for what that was for this name. EW, here we go, 1.75 million shares. The system even flagged that as unusual because this is not a name that sees very much activity. And you can see I have the historical to show you everything that we've had since May 1st, not a very active name. So definitely one that caught our attention. And while we didn't know the intent of this dark pool today we had the advantage of being able to have what came through in the options with size so we knew that we had some dark pool activity we knew that there was large market participants active today we had options flow that's giving us that directional insight so seeing those calls come in again with some size time and urgency we now were able to kind of put together a trade using not just one part of the system or one part of the information, but collectively using all of the data together. I love when we get these opportunities because they make some great trade setups. And this is something that we were able to talk about in the room. As soon as this flow came out, we were already seeing um, the size, knowing this name, there was some familiarity, and then we we're able to add some additional context to make sure our members knew that there was also some dark pool activity and we were holding price above. But let's take a look at an intraday view. So kind of a wonky market today um, had some pullbacks and some moves that came in and Apple was one that was definitely on everybody's watch list. And this is an intraday chart. So you can see we kind of popped right out of the gate. And as we were coming down and we mentioned this on voice in the chat. When you start to see these pullbacks come into the market is when you really want to be watching that dark pool feed, because oftentimes what you'll see is buyers starting to come in. And as we start to see these levels, what we're looking for is if that's going to hold as support um, or are what names are they coming into? What are they wanting to be active in? And it just so happened that right down here, we pretty much just had nailed the bottom. So we had this dark pool print come in today. Let me take this off a of historical. So we're isolating just to today's activity since we're talking about the intraday movement. And you can see here, I am central time. So this is 1027, 1127 if you're Eastern. 512,000 share dark pool print came in. That's almost $70 million money flow behind it at 186. You can see from the volume bar right where they came in. Mm, or maybe it was right here. 
But because we have the volume profile on the chart, we were able to see, is this going to hold as support? And that's what we look for. We look for these levels to hold. And it actually became an area where additional buyers stepped up. And as we came and pulled back down, we didn't even come back to test that. We just created a higher low. And you can see the rest of the price activity throughout the day for Apple. So this is a great advantage when you have some of these turning points in price action where you know you're kind of creating some pullbacks and you start to see some names that they become active in. So love this feature and love having this information. And that's just been a game changer for the team. So going to take a step back and just really show the big power, like when we're talking about big money, big money. Um, so this is something that's going back a little bit further. We're talking about some activity that happened 924 in 2020. So I'm, I know this is going back further, but I just think the money flow um, here was so powerful that it's worth speaking about. And so just going to show the cues and some activity we had, again, it was a really red tape, really brutal market. Um, we had made all-time highs and we're just selling off like crazy and then intraday we had all of this activity come in um, you had queues with 3 million another 3 million and 1.5 million and this was a definite shift because it's so unusual to see this kind of size come through and this kind of money flow that this was what kind of shifted and turned gears um, seeing this come in and I want to show you that on a chart so you can get a better feel because i know charlie you know this one this was the one for you that you said whoa. oh yeah oh whoa so let's like take a visualization right here and that's on this day so look at this look at this market parabolic just everybody's showing some optimism and boom rug pull and we are just deep red and you just can't you're getting this chop and you're just not catching any ground right this is where they came in on that was on 924 2020, 7.58 million shares. And so when you're talking about the money flow behind that, that is $2 billion. And now going back and look at this chart, we have never once came back to test those levels. That is, that is the, the day. That is money. That is the day. That, that was the day I said, okay. That is the day. I'm going to use this. That was that the day. Because <laughs> I had this added to black box. Not going to lie. It was a keyword to me. It was like, all right, we can say we got the dark pool. We did have it. I didn't know anything about it. Mel was teaching it. It wasn't that I didn't pay attention to Mel. I didn't understand it at all. I didn't. So being an old dog and new tricks, I wasn't trying to understand it. I'm going to be completely honest. I wasn't trying to. That day right there, because everybody was crying. Everybody was just like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. That day was the bottom right there, at least for that run. That was the bottom. And we've seen it live. Yep. And, and we it called was it like, live. Now, I think I said some cuss yeah. words, but I don't usually do that. I was like, holy what? You, you did. Yeah, I and, did. I did. <laughs> and our philosophy was that day, why would they be dumping here? Like, you know what I mean? They had this whole run. Why would they be dumping here? There's zero doubt that was accumulation. Zero doubt in our heads. Absolutely. But that's the advantage that we have. So not only do we get options flow, we're seeing the other side of the money flow. So really we're, um, we're money flow trading and, and it, it, it is the closest that we could possibly get to being right next to a hedge fund. We're using the information as best we can to make the better informed trading decisions. But honestly, the true black box stocks advantage is the community we share with our users. We are all on chat throughout the day, sharing our experiences. We've had time in the seat. We're comfortable with this platform. It can be overwhelming, but realize that we're talking through this information and helping you decide what is the better trades to be taking. So we're specializing in analyzing the options flow and the dark pool activity. Um, and we're sharing this all throughout the trading. We want you to learn the platform and we want you to be successful and one of the ways that we do that is by providing educational classes and it's important that we want to, we're not charging for anything this is part of your membership so i'm going to just go right here and show you an example of what our class calendar looks like and it is jam-packed um, there's often a lot of services that are charging out the yin yang for 
teaching this stuff, but we, we want you to learn. So just as an example, um, here is what we have. We're, we're right here, but you can see that we've got morning webinars. So let me just talk about this. This is where the screen is shared live. You are watching the activity as it's coming through. Maria and Charlie are on voice and they're talking through what they're seeing and they're going, that's interesting. Wait, they're really starting to hit this. This is actionable. I'm in this trade. And you're you're starting to see where, okay, let's see if we have a little bit more money flow behind that. And a full talk through and walk through on what we're seeing as experienced traders on how we're finding actionable trades. Additionally, um, we have evening classes. So we're uh, technical analysis with Kang. He's amazing at his chart setups and patterns. We have boot camp trading to where we're actually taking you if you're a new user and walking you through some of the basics of stock and options in a nutshell, an overview. We have a specialized program um, going over the platform. I also have a class on dark pool and tonight Mike has understanding options flow. But I, I just want to also again, highlight the fact that like we genuinely want you guys to be able to use this information the the worst thing that you could possibly do is just take this and not understand how to use it and that's why we spend so much time and we have a community of traders um, and mods experience to go through this information with you we want you to actually learn and be successful so i appreciate everybody stepping on and hopefully that added a little bit insight to some of the additional features that we have well, while you're there, can you show them how to download the dart pool oh, and the options goodness. flow? Oh, I've forgotten. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So sometimes, okay, and this is really helpful for people. I can't believe I forgot this. Um, That's right. <laughs> there is so much information that comes through. And so just going to kind of also show, this is our dart pool uh, feed that comes through the day. But let me tell you, it is jammed packed full of information. And maybe you're a swing trader and you still want to be able to get this information. This is in a unique feature because you can actually download this. So I'm going to just kind of give you an overview of what that looks like. And there's actually a little bit more context and detail. So this moved and downloaded to another screen. Let me shift this over so everybody can take a look. And this is where you get to really dig in. So just going to kind of open up some of these columns and let you, let me just take a look. All right, so the tape is still running because the official close doesn't actually happen until 8 p.m. Uh, Central Time. So as we continue to have uh, activity come through the dark pool scanner, we'll collectively get that. But just to give you some insight, you're able to see the volume, the price. We even add this feature, which tells you the percent of the 30-day average volume. This is giving you a quick sense of is that really even notable for this ticker? Is this something I need to be paying attention to? And the reason I say that is we have different um, average volumes traded for stocks. So uh, maybe you're seeing 100,000 in Apple. Well, that's not really anything that's unusual. It, it really just isn't because Apple is so heavily traded. Um, but let's say we had um, Dropbox with 350,000. That's a little bit more unusual. That one doesn't trade as much activity. So there's several ways to be able to really dig in and get your hands on this data. Um, we also have the ability to be able to sort by um, whether it's an ETF or an equity, but also the industry type, which is really interesting when you start to kind of hone in. Um, so we are able to identify some themes that may be starting to set up in certain sectors, or maybe you just like to trade bios and that's your specialty. So you can certainly just look at that information and see if there's any activity or names coming in that catch your attention. But this download feature is an amazing uh, for swing traders, especially that maybe don't get to be on all during the day, but you can still have all this information at your fingertips to be able to do some homework. And of course, there's some walkthroughs on how to go through this information or how I do it to help you guys have a better advantage and help get started. And we can also do that with options flow. Yes exciting and your historical and everything else so all right Charlie I think it's time to send it all back right. over to you unfortunately I'm not as good at that as Maria is is she uh, able to jump in or I send it to him right. perfect thank you so we've showed y'all a, a few of the things some of this is simple I'm going to get a little bit more complicated here um, because what separates us, and one of the questions, I'm already going through the questions box and reading some of this, and, and somebody said, hey, I noticed, I noticed on Twitter, um, somebody said there was put writing 
in Fubo. So actually, let me get my filters where I actually have puts and see that. Let's go ahead and type in Fubo. And I haven't looked at this, but let's go ahead and look at it. Some put writing, and there it is. You can see down here, uh, let's just isolate this to puts real quick. Get rid of calls. And yes, definitely there was some put writing. So most services aren't going to show this. Um, most services don't have this. This is when you see below the bid. Now, you might see some below the bid that comes through in white, and I can't tell you that's 100% put writing, and you might see it in purple, and I can't tell you that's 100%. These yellows mean open in transactions. So in this situation, this was some serious put writing. Not super serious, 153,000 on this strike and 148,000 on this strike. Um, you know, but that that is put writing. So that is one of the things that we get to see that most services don't. So put writing is bullish. We had some really good put writing in Square recently. Uh, I posted that on my Twitter. So let me go get the uh, dates from that real quick. And you can go back historically and see, oh boy, I hope I haven't. Um, let me slow this down because my computer hates go to webinar. So this will just take a second. Sorry, probably should have. Had, I didn't know we was going to talk about put writing. So this is uh, this is kind of new to me. That, and I forget that we even do it. I mean, I, we use it so much, and throughout the day we talk about it when some big put writing comes in. So. I'm not going to waste too much time trying to find this. Snap, put writing. So let me get that date. Uh, this happened on June 18th. So let's go to Snap, and I'll show you all how to use the historical button. Snap, let's go to historical. Let's go to June 18th real quick. Just going to double click it and it's going to give me the snap for that date. Um, I don't have my puts on this one. Maybe that wasn't the right date. June 18th. Let's try something else. Oh, there we go. Sorry. Let me get my. You can tell I'm not. Well, either way, we have <laughs> bullish put writing here too. Uh, these expire in uh, September. Again, below the bid, nine hundred eighteen thousand. Spot price was sixty one seventy nine. Sixty one seventy nine. By the time I posted this, it was in sixty threes. But this again, sixty one seventy nine. Earnings state July twentieth. So again, we see that stuff. Most places don't. Let's go over another one that came in last week that somebody had asked me to post about. Let me get off of historical. Oh, I wasn't on historical a minute ago, so maybe that was the problem. Anyway, LVS, let's go last week on this one. And I think this came in somewhere between here, the LVS that they wanted me to look at. Guys, I'm a little nervous when I do this, so many apologies. It was the 52s they asked me to look at. So here's the 52s. Now, they asked me, had they sold this yet? So this came in, these 52s for July expiration had started coming in, see the size here, $1.1 $1 .1 million, so the dollar seventy one, and they just keep pushing the price up. This is everything, actually, let me get my, let's start on July 21st and go to today. 
So this is everything that's traded on that sense. So you see all this again, big size coming in, exceeding OI. Look at this, they kept buying the next day. On the, this is the 24th, on the 25th, they're still buying. Have they sold any of it? There's a couple bid sides here and there, but look at this, 40,000, 23,000, 19,000, 32,000. If they did, they sold $100,000 of this, you know, closer to $1.5 million. Actually, by the time they bought all this, closer to $1.6 million. So they sold very little of that. We can tell that. That's one of the advantages, too. If they sell that, I'm going to see it. I'm going to know when they exit their position. Most sites just show you, hey, they bought. They bought. Great. Did they get out? Stocks tanking. Did they get out? This situation, they have not. Now. It had an ugly day the other day where it went back down to about 51 bucks or maybe even under 51 bucks, but it's been trending back up. Yeah, it was an ugly day. It was Friday. Kind of double bottomed over here, but and it's been trending back up. So uh, that is one of the advantages I can tell you when somebody's getting out of what I followed. Another one. Let's show you another thing real quick. Um, so that went over the LVS somebody asked me about Expedia so Expedia last week had some really good flow out to 2023 and it was this 180s I'm sorry that's what they rolled down to they were buying the 195s for 2023 look at this size look at this now, when they were buying this, you can see what the price was. This is Expedia on 625. Boom, boom, boom. They just nailed this. I'm not even going to try to count it. Eight or $10 million. No, over $10 million, I'm sure. What happens? Expedia started dropping. So one of the things we noticed is that we're hitting this 180 strike. But here was the tell. Let's turn on multi-leg. Here's one of the things that, again, we can see what exactly happened with this stock and it's right it's right right here so this on 628 they got out of the 195s at 20, they sold their 8000 contracts for 16 million and they rolled down to the 195s they wanted the 180s so right there that multi leg we can see exactly what they did they sold their position and, and moved it to another one so Instantly, we knew because we were tracking these 195. Some people actually played them. Um, you know, this happened at 162, so it's crawling back to 167. But we've seen that roll down. That's not something you're going to see in very few places on this earth, if any. So that's another one of the things that we do a little bit differently. Uh, getting some text messages, which usually means I'm messing something up. No, nope. not on this one. So. Again, we have that advantage with our filters. Now, when you're new, I'll tell you, don't use that multi-leg, run this thing, just add or above ask, run it clean. Uh, somebody's gonna tell you when they're getting out of that, today they started buying some 170s for uh, October. We'll see how that does. But that is one of the things, that's a few of the things that we do a little bit different. Again, we could see uh, a good example, and Swan had sent this to me earlier, ATVI. ATVI, we're going to go back historical. We're going to go on the way back over here to April. And I'll show you a good example. And Swan, thanks for sending this to me. They bought on 422 and they got out on 428. It was the 105s. They started buying these one. Uh, let me get my filter back, right? Look at this. We got to see them get out of this. So they were buying these <clears throat> November 105s down here. And they hit it pretty good. Now, this isn't just like that got to have must flow. But the thing was, stocks started trending down. What happened? Boom. We watched them get out of every bit of that. So instantly, we knew if we followed them into that trade, oh, crap, we may want out, right? So you can see they were getting in the 450s, 470s, and they got out in the 350s. They took a loss. Now, that goes to show you not every trade is going to work out, but the one advantage that you have, at least with this, is if you followed them in and they start getting out, you might want to get out with them.
you can see fast forward the stock still at the same price it was you know when this happened back in april so in all this run we've had in the last three months atvi hasn't really participated that much another good example of seeing them come in and then watching them get out such a game changer so, such a game changer yeah. in the sense that, you know, if you're following this and this is something that you're looking at, this is such important information and kind of some of the feedback that we've gotten from a lot of members um, or different members of the fintech community is that uh, there's some other services that are not showing that because it can create a little bit of confusion. Uh, but that's why we're here. You know, we're talking through this and, and making sure you're understanding that because that is extremely important information. When you're following millions in, if they're getting out, you want to know. <laughs> you definitely want to. You want to know. And I'll show you something else that we can do. So, and I had forgot we did this. And somebody had asked me on a webinar a few days ago. They're like, "Man, I wish you could just see October flow." So, guess what? If you want to see just October flow, I can go down here and scoot over my calendar and just say, okay, I want to see October 1st through October 30th. Hit expiration, set filters, watch what happens. I'm only seeing October flow. So as a swing trader, you know, some of these guys want to drill down into stuff that's further out. So right here's a good example of, well, I can do that. Say so I want to see next year. So heck, let's just go on over to, uh, I don't know, let me get off historical. Let's go into, um, January of next year and see what, what kind of action we had in January. We'll see January through March, through March 31st. We had apply, set filters. Now I'm only looking at uh, January flow through March of next year. And then maybe I want to see January of next year, but I want to see only $500,000. Okay, I can do that too. Let me get this back on the ask side. So you're not seeing a lot out there, but this, you know, for my research at night and other people's, you can drill down so many ways into this. So just another thing that we have. Oh, I was on historical for a second. But, uh, you know, one of the things yesterday, too, let's go over uh, SPY yesterday real quick, and then I'm going to, we'll start taking some questions. But hold on, let's get this filter back to, uh, let's get this off expiration. That might help. And let's get this off 500,000. That might help. So we're on SPY. Let's go to historical. Let's go to yesterday for a second. On SPY. And let's get rid of these puts for a second as well. I don't actually watch puts throughout the day. But they started coming in yesterday at these 440s. I had posted this on Twitter. And look at the size for SPY. You know, the SPY was down here 427, 80s. You know, 427, 60s, 40. They pounded that all day. These contracts, you know, when I posted somewhere around 475, these things hit like 440, I mean, 545, 550 today, just overnight. So we got to see, like, somebody's still bullish on the market here. Look at this 14 million, 8.62 million. Um, so that was still, uh, you know, some bullishness. So let's hit some questions real quick. Let me actually check these uh, text messages, which does mean sometimes I'm messing something up. So I'm going to uh, go back up to the top and try to catch some of these. Um, Charlie, since we're on your screen, can you please show where the flow comes through, how to get the, to that area? You just go from, like, if you're on uh, this screen, you just go to, straight to options. So that will be that one. Uh, Anthony, I find myself getting stopped out of positions that go on to run. Any suggestions on how to handle? Uh, first thing is going to be your position sizing. If you're getting stopped out too soon, you may be trading too heavy. Um, that's typically what happens. I would say stick to one to two contracts until you learn how that ticker trades. And then you can size up once you've, once you've gotten a feel for how the contracts on that ticker trade. The other thing is that um, we really try to sell into areas of resistance or what tends to work for some people is put in a stop and keep pushing that stop up until that stop takes you out so instead of you stopping yourself out let the stop take you out and yes this is being recorded okay sorry i didn't see that one was answered 
Uh, this one is probably for Mike. Do you have stats on time to profit on these trades? You identified how much are buys, buy and hold versus look at the chart to catch a short uptrend. So what are what is the Mike? Do you have any stats on how many of these are swings versus intraday trades or scalps? So I don't have specific stats on that. Uh, what I will say is if you're a swing trader, this is a pretty great system as far as identifying trades that you can get into and hold for a week, two weeks, two months, whatever your time frame is. I'm also a day trader and a scalper, so I can use some of the shorter dated stuff and find some flow trades that I'm going to get into with the intentions of getting out the same day. So whether you're a swing trader, scalper, day trader, whatever your time frame is, there's different ways we can use the data to find those trades. The trades we're looking for that have that size, time, urgency, those are typically swing trades. And I don't have a time frame on how long you would hold them. Um, everyone's trade style is a little different. So how long you hold it depends on whether you like shorter term or longer term trading. But a lot of these you can hold for a week, two weeks, a month, etc. I just don't have uh, statistics as far as within Let me give a good like this or that there's no no number that i have for anything like that let me give a good example this was tuesday we got into himx <clears throat> tuesday these 12 dollar calls were coming through uh i got in this one at 270 now and they were buying 13 they were buying all kinds of strikes uh i was I, I bought this with the intentions of swing trading. Let's go back to a five-day chart where these were actually coming in. Uh, you can see here. And they did gap up even more yesterday. Now they faded back off kind of in the support level over here. But when these came in, so I intended to buy this as a swing. I did. What happened, those things went up 100 bucks a contract that day. I punted. I, I couldn't sell fast enough. Now the next morning I was kind of crying because these were up actually $200. Uh, same day. Same day, and what Mike's talking about, you know, sometimes you have intentions on swinging. These 3750s. Look at this on uh, WW on Weight Watchers. They were coming down here at 34.99. They hit this for 1.38 million. We got in this one. Let's go back to. Let's go show that chart. Uh, this was. They came in right here. These things jammed. We hundred dollar chucked those the same day as well. So these things we got in, I think 240, 250, and they went up into the threes really, really quick. Um, again, intended on swinging because they still have plenty of time. And you know what? If you were still in this, I don't think this is a bad swing. I mean, it's still at 36 bucks. These came in at, let's call it $35. So not the end of the world, but you can see how fast they run that day. They hit it at 34.99, 35.16, 35.11, 36.75. This was all the same day. They just kept pushing and buying everything they could get their hands on. So yeah, these things you can see, we were already, we were selling right after this came in because we bought down here. We were selling, uh, I think 340, 350. Now, again, we intended on swinging these. Sometimes profit happens fast and you're in and out. So when Mike showed this a minute ago, only being up a few cents on his tw stock twits page, what he didn't show you was that we already had exited these things into this enormous spike. So sometimes you get into a trade Thinking it's a swing, uh, deck was another one. I'm not gonna sit here bullshit everybody. We got out of deck for like three hundred dollars profit, and was like, wow, this is great. I think Wellbury got the most of that day. Uh, we had some people get eight, nine hundred dollars off that deck. Now it's doubled. So some people may still be swinging that. We got out pretty quick because I like to take gains. I do this for a living, so uh, I have to actually pay house payments and insurance and stuff like that. So I like to take profits. Uh, but these things were intended to be, you know, swing trades. All right, next question. Um, it's for Mike. Question for Mike, in the case of December, can we go further out of the money if we can't afford the actual flow? I'll tell you that everyone of, every one of us is gonna tell you no, but I'm gonna let Mike go ahead and elaborate on that. Yeah, so actually I go over part of that in a weekly class that I do. I posted a link if you guys want more education. There is a class tonight that's about an hour and a half of explaining how we use the data. If you go to, I just posted it on Twitter. So if you look up Seven Star Mike on Twitter, I have a pulling link. Pulling it up. That. Pulling it up right now. This is how you get the Mike's class tonight on Options Flow. 
Yeah, so that I'll go into a little more detail on how we interpret and use the data, but the quick answer on that is no. Sometimes what we'll do is, let's say a stock is trading at $100, and we see them go after a $135 strike. Sometimes what we'll do is go for maybe a $120 or $115 strike for the same time. What you don't want to do is take their trade idea and expand on it in the wrong direction, meaning if you can't afford a $135 strike that the flow is for, you don't want to look at the $150 strike and say, well, I can afford that one, so I'll get that. doesn't mean the trade won't work out. It's just taking on more risk. So the thing about flow trading is we don't know who these people are or why they're placing these trades. So when we find the pattern we want to follow, what we're going to do is stick to exactly what they're buying. And the reason for that is because we don't know what they're doing. We see what they're actually doing, but we don't know why. Now, sometimes we'll get in a flow trade and let's say we're in it for an hour and it's just kind of going up and down a little bit. And then we get this huge spike in a headline and we always say, oh, someone knew something. And that's often the case, right? These big hedge funds have research teams that can find out information that you and I just don't have access to. So since we don't know why they're putting on these trades necessarily, what we're gonna do is follow exactly what they're doing. So if they want three months of time and $135 strike, we don't know why they're putting on that trade. So we're gonna follow that same three months of time and the same $135 strike. If you can't afford the $135 strike, my suggestion would be just skip the trade because there's always another trade. What you don't want to do is have someone go for a trade that's $135 strike and let's say the contracts are six bucks and you say, well, the $150 strike is only $3 so I can get that one or even worse, I can get more of them because they're cheaper. So we don't really want to go further out of the money than what the flow is doing. You can, but understand there's a lot more risk in doing that. And what we want is high probability trades. So when we see the right look to the flow, no questions asked, at least this is the way I trade. No questions, no hesitation. I'm just gonna follow the exact same flow that they follow. Going further out of the money, just understand that you're taking on much more risk. If that trade goes against you a few days, those further out of the money contracts are gonna erode a lot quicker. So it's just more dangerous to go further out of the money than what the, the big money wants. We don't know why they're doing it, so we're just gonna do exactly what they do. All right, uh, next question. Can you cover Tesla data flow? What specifically are you wanting on Tesla? You'll have to give us a little bit more detail, so we'll come back to that question. <laughs> so, hold on, uh, let, me, okay, let me go ahead and hit Tesla real quick. I wanna tell you, Tesla is the most active thing. I actually built a filter and I'm gonna show it to you. I did this to get rid of Tesla. This one right here. Over 750 billion market cap. Unfortunately, Tesla fell under that market cap and we were all crying again because Tesla flow actually is about uh, three to 4% of all the flow that comes through black box, or at least it was at one point. Um, I, I wish it, it would the price would hurry up and go back up so I would never have to see it again because this is why I built this filter. Um, so with Tesla flow, I'm just going to be honest with you, you get so much speculation on both sides. It is the hardest options flow to decipher on the planet. Uh, I love it from a chart perspective, from an options flow perspective. These guys, man, they will come in and buy $400 puts and $1,200 calls. And I, I always like to give the explanation of if I have to do too much deciphering, I just pass, right? And with Tesla, sometimes it's cut and dry. Tesla, we've seen mornings when they come out of the gate um, swinging so hard, you know it's a Tesla day. And then then it's just some days it's all day mixed flow and it's just hard to really interpret that this guy wants that strike, that much money. Uh, so with Tesla, I prefer myself to find that Tesla flow with time uh, that's out into the future that doesn't have as many, because Tesla, man, you talk about decay and erosion of a contract it has to tesla has to go in your direction at all times i would say for new traders don't even touch it don't even touch it until you're like super experienced with options trading and how they decay i did i built a filter just to get that off my screen unfortunately the market cap dropped they need to hurry up and go back up 
All right, next question. Charlie, why is it why is it that by the time the scanner shows size time and urgency, the stock has already moved? This is real time data. I can't I can't tell you that in the case of like EW today, sometimes it moves, sometimes it doesn't, but like EW today, you can see like this was one minute and thirty seconds, right? And it's it was this it was this spike. It was this spike. I mean Sometimes flow comes in and it just jumps it. There's nothing we can do about that except tell you that that is to the second live data. There is no delay from us to the exchanges. And I'll tell you how fast this is. Say Maria decides to buy in her thinkorswim account. Um, she decides to buy $2 million of, you know, uh, plug, right? She sends that order from her phone because she's a phone trader like I am. She sends it to the to e -trade, she types it on E-Trade, E-Trade sends it to the exchange. The exchange, when it's filling it, is sending that data to me at the same time it's sending it back to E-Trade. So I'm actually probably going to see it before it lands in her E-Trade account. Before she sees that she's filled, that data is already coming across our screen. That's how live it is. There is no delay. It ain't like we get this from E-Trade. We're getting it at the same time she's getting it. But when she sees her fill, we've seen her fill. Okay. Uh, Charlie, what is the difference between the magenta and yellow colors? So, good example was let's go back to that spy yesterday real quick, and I'll just show you what these colors mean real quick. Uh, spy, go back to historical, which was yesterday. These four forties. So, when these were coming through in white, that just means oh, well, I wasn't exceeded right on the day. So as they kept buying these, then they turned to purple, meaning OI has been met on the day. Now you see these big yellows, that exceeded all OI in one single trade. So again, it goes from white. So we know OI was less than 18,257. We know that. I don't know where it was, but uh, it comes through as white. So you can see this was 7,000, 10,000. I mean, there, you know, there was at least 10,000 in OI right there. So as soon as OI is met on the day, boom, it's going to turn purple to let me know, okay, now they've bought everything inside and are still buying. Uh, yellow tells me they bought it, you know, in one single trade exceeded all open interest. In this case, look at this 30,000. So that's what the colors mean. All right. Next question. I think water post. Okay. So Mel answered that one. All right. How does this compare? How does Black Box compare to some of the other flow providers, such as Unusual Whales? Is Unusual Whales, a, is a, are they another service? They are, and, and I'm not going to knock any service any out anywhere in the planet. Uh, Unusual Wells is a good guy. Um, I don't know if they have live data or not, or if you're getting something delayed. Um, I can't, I, I'm not going to compare myself to anybody, else, but I can tell you that when you go through what, what you're seeing today, that you're not going to get this. I will say you're not going to get all these features anywhere else, especially the fly news and everything else. Unusual Wells, Cheddar Flow, Flow Algo, all good services, not going to knock them. I will say we have more data. We can see when they exit. We have the fly news. We have the live dart pool, no delayed charts. We have everything in one package. But what we have more than what everybody else is, what Mel talked a few minutes ago about, people teaching you this stuff, is the most dangerous thing on the planet, and I don't care who you use, the most dangerous thing on the planet is data that nobody is explaining to you. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it is the community is of traders. Dangerous. It is absolutely. And we are all, um, and it's been the most amazing thing. <laughs> it has been a game changer, even just for us as mods and traders ourselves, is to be able to have everybody that has their own individual specialty and their own little bit of information. So we respect everybody's trading styles and we're all a little bit different, bringing our own little flavor to the team. Um, Charlie knows that if there's something with Dark Pool, I've got him covered. I know if Maria's got an upgrade or some earning stuff, something that she's got, we're constantly just feeding the information to create Great, a strong trading thesis and this has been probably the most powerful part of what this community is it, it, it's dangerous if you don't have somebody helping you walk through this information so we're there all day long adding additional context i'm going through the dark full data we're looking at every angle we possibly can to really be able to create the strongest thesis for uh, taking trades or, or kind of being a little apprehensive to take those trades. And that is an absolute game 
changer with just data and not understanding the data or having experienced eyes helping you learn how to use this data, you can definitely do a little bit more harm than good. And, and there's a lot of times that, and I, I, again, I think all these other services are great. I'm not going to knock anybody, but um, there's examples that we, we've seen today. And I, which one was it that was all that bedside stuff? Um, that we know they were selling. Yeah, it one was of them, now, N-O-W. So not not exiting all of it, but if you showed, so if that's all you saw was ask, you are you may be putting money behind that, above the ask. Right. But they were dumping a lot of this now, the bid side, bid side, bid side, bid side. There was one that came through above the ask, but they were dumping a lot of now today. If you don't have access to all of that, you may end up trapped in a trade that you uh, kind of regret. So having all that data, uh, again, when you first start flow trading, I don't recommend that you start multi-leg and then blow the bidding and all that stuff. You need to understand just how flow works. And then you've got the rest of your life to say, okay, let me throw in that bid side. But that's what we're here for. We're going to catch that for you anyway. So in the beginning, just run it ask above ask. If there's any shenanigans, we're going to see it. I mean, Mike, Mel, Maria, somebody's going to see the shenanigans and point it out. Or if we don't, trust me, we've got almost 6,000 traders. They're watching it. Somebody's going to catch the shenanigans that's experienced and watching all that bedside stuff. The, and the extra, first start eyes, out. the extra eyes and ears as well, right? I mean, so we've got how many eyes going through all of this data? Um, and, and more recently, I could say the last couple of days, we've been able to call out some really good news trades as well. So this is definitely an advantage for those that work during the day that may not be able to be on the charts is you have this voice chat that's complementing the service. So if you're not even able to be on the charts at all times, we are calling this out all day live on voice. We're talking about setups that we're seeing, whether um, we're seeing technical breaks, we're seeing some dark pool activity and what that looks like on the chart, um, the options flow, and then also the news. You know, as that comes out, that's something that I definitely always keep my ear to, and that's been a great feature um, to be able to kind of be extra eyes and ears if you're not able to kind of be in front of the screens all day and work. So while there is a lot of data, this is something that we're on voice as a community together discussing and calling out, and it actually has been working very well for quite a few members um, to where they can still have their ear to the ground and they know a few of the names that they'd like to get into or they can hear the excitement in our voice when we start talking about something and we're in, I'm in, I'm in. Um, so I'm there's in. that additional, yeah, when you have that consensus trade, that's a good one. Yeah. All right, next question. Um, and guys, we're not, we may not get to everyone's questions because we do have limited uh, time and we've got a bunch of them coming through here. So Marina, where it says type uh, I see sweep and block sweep is that you're saying that common sense tells me it's something that is moving blocks to stop. What exactly does that refer to? So that a sweep and a block um, refer to how the order was filled. They're both smart money orders. A sweep you're going to think about um, as more of a market order. All right, a block is going to be more like a limit. Again, both smart money orders. But what's happening with the sweep is that whoever is sending that through is saying, hey. I want in and I want in right now. I do not care how much I pay for the contracts. So don't care if I pay, you know, continue to pay up, 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 and up. I just want in and I want in immediately. So what happens is that order is split up and sent across multiple exchanges to ensure the fastest execution, right? With a block, whoever's putting that order in is saying, hey, I want $5 million of PayPal, but I also want you to do X, Y, and Z with it. And don't fill me until you can do that. So there are conditions surrounding that, right? The price is either negotiated, it's tied, they're doing something additional. So that is your difference. The sweep shows us more urgency. That person does not care. Here's a good example. GE yesterday, 5,000 contracts filled at $1. Five million bucks. You see it right there. I'm not going to follow that trade because there's no way 5,000 or 50,000 contracts, I apologize, and $5 million did not leave the, you know, cross multiple exchanges. That tells me that's tied, negotiated, or something. I know it was talked about on CNBC yesterday. Uh, it's one of the plays. And I think they actually had news on, uh, I think the fly actually put something out about it as well yesterday. Tied to a hedge. It did, go. it was, yeah. $5 million call buyer in General Electric tied to a hedge. Shares near flat, blah, 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 the massive block on Amex where a trader paid 
$1 million for 50,000 January 14 calls versus $2.25 million shares of stock at 1308. So uh, opening a new position of about 6%, 6 above spot, possibly a stock replacement trade following a run from the level of $7 nine months ago. So we've seen this instantly. Now, has it moved up since then? Yes. When I see those big blocks, and this is why we tell them uh, we hate big blocks and we cannot lie. Uh, that's why I always know that's tight because there's no way you buy 50,000 contracts and don't sweep the exchanges. It's impossible. I know it's tied the second I see it. And I avoid it unless, you know, like if we, you know, uh, it did get the CNBC pump. Uh, and these contracts went up a little bit. This doesn't interest me. Those big blocks don't interest me. I want to see them sweep that exchange. Here's another right, one today. Oh, one, real quick, sorry. And I know we do get ones at times. These 170s on AXP, every one of those is a block. Now, they did go up. I will have to say these trended up, but not one sweep in the pile. I'm not going to touch it. That's just me. Go ahead, Maureen. Sorry. No, you're good. Uh, next question, Charlie. I noticed in the app there are flow plays. Is that somewhere on the page? I don't have time to join Discord during the day. You can see those over here. Uh, they will pop up in main chat, but also if you just watch the options chat, uh like today anything that comes through the phone will come through options chat as well and any mod play will come through there as well so but anything i send to the phone will come through here and again it will come in main chat all right next question is there a way to set up alerts on options you are in to let you know if there is a change or would you just recommend checking history at the end of the day for any changes josh if you're looking for um when you say you're you're looking for a change, are you looking for a change in the price of the underlying, or are you looking for a change in in that particular line that you're in? So we will wait to hear back from Josh. Looking and for sell off in the underlying price, not. If you're looking for a sell-off in the under, if you're looking for a change in price in the underlying stock, you cannot set up an alert on black box for that. But you can. Um, a lot of the platforms like Thinkorswim, you can set up price alerts there. Um, if you're looking for exiting people exiting positions, I would recommend looking at the history at the end of the day. Okay, here is a question probably for Mel and Charlie. Uh, why do different services pick up on different options and dark pool, I'm sorry, pick up on different options flow and dark pool from one another? I've used a few services and for example, some options flow available on one service isn't available on another service. In summary, what factors are responsible for picking up on options flow and how come that there doesn't seem to be a single channel that is relied on to pick up on flow alerts? Uh, we have all the data. I, I do know, and I'm not going to, again, name any services out there, but we'll see an example of like 30 lines of flow come through and somebody might have three of them. And, and I asked the same question, why didn't you have all 30? Uh, they're not paying as much for the data as we are. I can tell you that. Like, that's the biggest thing is we pay crazy fees. Our members for the exchanges, when you sign up with us, you have to fill out those exchange agreements. We're paying between the fly news and the exchanges a lot of money per member to have live everything. So we're catching it all, bid side, middle, whatever. We catch it all. Some people, you know, I can't answer that. There's no way I can answer why somebody else doesn't have it. I've asked I, myself I that. Think it's just a, but I think you're right. I think it's, it's a matter of how much that service is willing to pay for. I know some services are not willing to pay for all of the data. So um, they pay for a partial, a portion of the data. And and some of the stuff you're getting is delayed. And as far as the dark pool activity goes, what's something to know and important um, is that our service uh, or our feed is dedicated to only dark pool data. And so there is backend coding that will show what exchange um, larger transactions are filled on. And so we are really only interested in getting the dark pool information. Um, so our filter and our scanner is dedicated and set to only show that. Oftentimes what you're seeing, if you're seeing a discrepancy in information is that they're showing 
information that's coming through on a lit exchange um, that's going to be some of the exchanges that have the uh, moo or uh, market on open or market on close orders and that we we explicitly wanted that removed so that we could be focused on just what is uh, dark pool because we find that's where others are not showing that data. Um, so there may be some discrepancies, but we are a dedicated dark pool data feed. Like there's been a high frequency trader that used to write algorithms that has gone through the scanner and we've worked together to fine tune this. So as far as what everybody else is showing, um, we're we're on it. <laughs> We're on it for sure. And, and maybe why that's don't you a question. Oh, sorry. sorry. No, no just to sometimes maybe that's a question for some of the others um, because I, I feel absolutely secure with what we have, knowing that we're butted up right to the exchange. Our feed is tied right into exchanges versus some that are coming in a little bit delayed. Tim's question for Charlie why don't you watch puts? Um, and we have this happen in the room every day. We'll see some some August calls in MasterCard, and we'll be like, "Ooh, let's jump in." And somebody will say, "Hey, man, but there's some puts for December," and I'm like, "Dude, just take it off your screen because you're just confusing yourself." I short every day. I shorted the queues twice today. I think live in the room. Um, I don't watch put flow because there's so many hedges in it and so many other things and and more shenanigans. I do like to see the bullish put writing. Uh, I find that pretty uh, intriguing. But as far as just watching the puts, it just clogs up my screen. I'm looking for size, time, and urgency, and it's easier to see when I don't have all this mess in there. It just starts clogging. You know, I, I'm old. I'm blind. I don't have to decipher all that. I Somebody in the room is probably watching puts anyway, so I don't have to, But and maybe I'm lazy. But to me, this just keeps it cleaner. Uh, I do play puts. Everybody knows it. I play puts constantly, uh, especially off news and stuff. I'll short whatever, uh, but I just I'm not going to watch it. It's just me. It just it adds too many more confusion. You'll be like, man, I, they just bought some Amazon calls, but man, there's some puts out there for next week and spy, and you're just you're just confusing yourself. So this, I try to run it as least confusing for a new person, and I like to look at it as the eyes of what a new person should be looking at. Okay, there are there are several questions uh, surrounding this, and um, the question is basically, how can you tell when they're if they're exiting? Before uh, Charlie and Mel get into that, what I want everyone to understand is that you can make an educated guess based on watching live flow as to whether they could potentially be exiting a position. I want everyone to learn and know that they have to check OI. The following day, they have to compare that with the, the previous day's OI to confirm whether or not that was truly an exiting trade. There, there are a lot of especially new traders that are identifying things as um, being exited and they're not. So please, please, please double check that OI. The, the only true way to confirm whether or not they've exited is to compare the current day's OI and volume with tomorrow, with the following morning, with the OI in the following morning. So Charlie and Mel, can you please go over how you make an educated guess as to whether or not they're exiting contracts intraday? So, so look, here's the Facebook. Let's just go with the Facebook 350s that they were buying this morning. If I can find them. There we go. And you can see, like, uh, they were buying these 350s pretty early this morning. And let me get some time stamps that are close enough to tell you, like, okay, uh, let's get into some better time stamps. And this is another thing. This, this is why I try to tell people don't run all this below bid stuff and bid stuff, because um, this would confuse most traders. They're buying, they're buying. Oh, no, they're selling. They just dumped. They just dumped. Look, look at the sizes of these things. In comparison, and a lot of times you'll see a uh, good example right here. Uh, this happened. I'd really like to get some good close time stamps. Really good close time stamps so I can kind of show you. Some of these they did just take profits in, no doubt. 
I don't worry about the intraday stuff as much as I worry about when I'm swinging because intraday, it can get confusing. It's like, man, there's all this good stuff. There's all this ass side stuff. That's where I rely mainly on the chart. And I try to tell people just ignore a lot of that. But now when it's all bid, 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 then you're going to know. You're going to know instantly. Like, let's go, let me go click this IPO on historical for a second. On 426, they got in APO, and on, let's go to those 50s, this one right here. And let's add bid side to this real, oh wait, so maybe I got the wrong one. I think I've got my dates wrong. 26. Oh, I did have my dates wrong. Or 26 through June 3rd. Uh, yeah, here we go. Had my dates wrong. User error. So let's go to one that we're selling these the other day. Right here, they bought, right? On April 26, they bought. Look at all that bid side that came in the other day last week. And the OI, we did check the OI, and they did sell. This was this was confirmed selling. You can see where they bought the 1.89, 2,805 contracts, and you can add this up. And it's just bid side, bid side, bid side. That's clear. That's crystal clear. I can look at that and say, okay, they're selling. Even if there's an occasional last side in the bunch, I can tell they're selling this, you know. And they did sell it at all-time highs. Now it's continued to run up another two dollars since they sold this but you can see they had nice profits from 674 into the you know mid 11s that's easier to tell than looking at something that's very active intraday because you got to think exchanges fill literally in high frequency trading you can make a thousand trades before i can blink that's how fast these computers work um so you can actually have Ask, ask, bid, ask, ask, bid, bid, and it's this—it's one buyer just pushing it up. And let me go give you a quick example, and then because we're we're really uh, push for time here. Twenty trades. Look at this pins. Pins is a good example. Three forty-six ask side. Three fifty, and this has time stamps, so this is easier on us. Three forty-six ask. Three fifty-six, and three sixty. Then 362, uh, 362 bid, 372 bid, 375 bid, 373 below bid. But this price kept pushing up, and all this happened in three minutes, three minutes and six seconds. So this wasn't somebody buying down here and then selling it and flipping it back out. So the, the timestamps is key to everything when you're going to look at ass side, bid side. Timestamps is key. And again, this was one buyer, and we ended up just killing these contracts. But that's irrelevant. Um, but you can see again from 349 all the way to 375. There's some bid side in there and below the bid. They didn't flip that out. Look, they didn't flip it out. They didn't buy it at 350. Decide to sell it at 360 and 362, and sell it at 375 only to buy it back at 375. So that timestamp tells you everything in that situation. Next question. All right. What kind of chat community do you have, and what software is it through? This is through its black box stocks. We've got. Uh, voice and text chat. And yes, we do provide color throughout the day. All day, every day. Yep. Are there a particular number of symbols you look at daily for familiarity or do you just open up to anything? Do you stick to only a select number of sectors? I'm basic, but okay, so let's, let's rewind. If you're new to trading, there's nothing wrong with keeping your scope a little bit smaller and focusing on either a specific sector that you like or a set of tickers that you like. Uh, I've been trading for a long time. I've been trading now for over 16 years. I'm pretty open to anything, um, but I also have a lot of experience trading pretty much everything. Same with Charlie. Charlie's pretty open to almost there. I think we're both pretty adverse to oil and gas, though. We just both don't don't tend to do as well with that. But I don't play um, banks. Yeah, and we, we don't like playing banks often. So, you know, we, we know where our strengths are, but we're pretty open to everything. Mel's pretty open to everything. Mike's open to everything. Um, but we all have a lot of experience trading a lot of different sectors. 
But again, if you're new, there's nothing wrong with, with bringing that scope in a little bit, focusing on um, a, either a set of tickers that you like or a, a sector that you like specifically and learning those tickers and then adding to it slowly over time. Uh, let's see, is there an automated way to make it? Let's see. So you show the transaction bought and sold in a week. One has to keep watching the screen to see if there was any flow of the same tickers. Is there an automated way one can configure so if the flow comes, one is alerted and also if that alert was closing position of the previous bot options? Charlie. Whoa, you lost me. What? Um, so no, you do have to keep watching the flow. It's not, it's not set up to where you can, uh, configure your own type of alert. You can go, you can narrow down the alert stream and let's say that you bought Apple and you're watching a specific line. You can, um, you can filter the flow or, or type in Apple, search for just Apple flow. And then look through that flow. You can download the flow for Apple, and then you can use Excel to sort and find what you're looking for. But there's not an automated way to configure that. Uh, let me hit this question real quick, Maria. Do sure. you guys prefer larger size bets with time or smaller size bets with larger quantity? So it's different. Like if I see, I prefer like to see. Uh, we're, we just hit July. I prefer to see August and September millions of dollars, but if you show me a, a 600,000 above the ask yellow sweep for something in two weeks, I'm probably going to follow it, even though it's a smaller size bet that, that as the time frame decreases, so does that what I have to have to get into that trade, like a weekly roulette. You start showing me some of those four and $500,000 yellows expiring Friday, I'm usually going to jump them, especially if they're strike or two in the money, because we found that those have a high probability of hitting. Uh, man, and I'm glad you joined the webinar. That makes my day. Uh, but I, I do prefer for myself to, to find those when I'm in July 1st. I'm, I'm really wanting to find those August and September multi-million dollar trades. But again, if it's something shorter dated and it's got enough size yellow above the ass, I'll still, you know, I'll still hit on that as well. Absolutely. There's two questions I want to go. Um, we're going to we're going to do two questions and then we'll have you show how to get to the links and then I guess we'll wrap up. Um, this question, is the block trade good or a, or a sweep trade good? Sweeps. So again, keep in mind, sweeps are showing urgency. Do you want to follow the guy that says, I don't give a crap how much I'm paying for these contracts. I just want in and I want in immediately. Or do you want to follow the guy that's like, yeah, I want to put a large amount of money here, but you got to do four things before I'm willing to do that. So think about it in that, in that sense. Are you wanting to follow the guy that, that, is, that has that much conviction in that trade that they're saying, I don't give a crap. Just put me in it. I don't care how much I pay. Or do you want to follow the guy that says, eh, yeah, but for me, I'm following the guy that, that doesn't care. The one that has so much conviction that they just want in immediately. The second question, Mel, this one, um, and we may have to send it back to your screen. Can you show them how to add the dark pool to the black box chart? Let me, let me send this back to you real quick. Okay. Okay, great. So the proprietary dark pool study that will overlay the activity is going to be right here. Let me pop this out so we can have a little bit more visualization. Studies. And it's going to be the first one because we're really proud of this. This has been an absolute game changer. So we can quickly see as soon as this information comes in, is this coming in real time? How is price responding? What are we seeing? So just going to highlight a ticker that's had some recent activity just so you can see the overlay. So here, XPEP, we've had some activity that came in earlier today. We can see that, um, again, I'm central, 833, 138,000. And then again, after hours, we have additional activity. So this because we have this highlighted just through an intraday chart is showing us one minute, but we have the availability and access to more information. So I could change this to a 15 minute chart and these bars are going to show everything that's visual within this screen. And so we can continue to go through multiple timeframes to show all of the activity to be able to do 
a better analysis of where price has been. And look at this. I mean, $32, this is where you've had the most dark pool activity for XPEF. We've had additional large dark pool activity and these volume bars are just showing you where you've had the most transactions. But if you're more granular and you wanna be able to actually see that transaction activity, you can also click history. Right now I'm set to just show through May. So we'll just go with that. I'm gonna set and here is everything to show us the transaction details that go along with the corresponding dark pool volume overlay. I think that answered the question, Maria. I'm not sure if you want me to leave it on my screen or- Yeah, it does. I'm gonna send it uh, back to Charlie. Okay. Thank you.